Welcome to everybody. Please put your phones on silent. Uh, Madam Clerk, item number one. Order appropriation of $25,000 from the unappropriated <coughs> estimated receipts of the general fund for fiscal year 2017 to the Law Department Ordering and Maintenance Services. Invited Honorable Mayor Bill Carpenter, John A. Conan, Chief Financial Officer, Philip Nozrella, City Solicitor. Council Sullivan. Mr. Chairman, I'm going to make a motion to table agenda item number one due to the fact that um, we would be acting on this next Monday night at 8 o'clock, which is the regular scheduled city council meeting. And as you and your capacity as president have called the 7 p.m. special meeting to set the tax rate, it's a moot point to act on this tonight. So I'm going to, I'm going to make a motion to table. Second. second. Motion made and seconded to table item number one. All those in favor? All those opposed? Item number one is tabled. Uh, item number two. Appropriation of three hundred and fifty thousand from the unappropriated estimated receipts of the general fund for fiscal year two thousand and seventeen to police personal services over time. Invited Honorable Mayor Bill Carpenter, John A. Conan, Chief Financial Officer, John Crowley, Police Chief. So Chairman. Council Sullivan. I'm also going to make a motion to table this for the same reasons as previously explained. Second. Motion made and seconded to table item number two for the previously previously explained reasons. All those in favor? All those opposed? Uh, item number two is tabled, and just counselors, those will probably be coming back to us, but just as explanation, uh, once the tax rate is set okay. at the prior meeting, okay. we will not be able to act on those, so uh, I believe those items will be coming back to us, but with different funding sources. Uh -huh. Item number three. Resolve, if the Council on Aging, after careful analysis and by vote of its members, determines the Shaw Center is the most appropriate and advantageous location for expansion of programs and services, the City Council expresses its support for that relocation and urges the Mayor to take whatever actions may be necessary to support and assist this proposal. Invited Janice Fitzgerald, Director of the Council on Aging, Teddy Barasa, Chairman of the Council on Aging Board, and Richard Bath, Board of Director. Good evening, Ms. Fitzgerald. Uh, Councilor Fowell, I believe you filed this. Yes, I did. Uh, I, I'll only take a few minutes on this, and I thank Ms. Fitzgerald and Mr. Bath for being here. Uh, I, I'm convinced that we have an opportunity to do something for our ever-expanding senior population if we seriously consider moving the Council on Aging. Okay. If, if we seriously move the Council on Aging up to the Shaw's Notice that this resolve is very carefully worded. I'm saying if the Council votes, the Council on Aging votes to do this, to go to the Shaw's Center, I just want them to know that they have our blessings, that we support them, and that we will work with the mayor and other city departments to make that a reality. This in no way is saying that we're moving them or we're locking the mayor or the council into a position. We're just saying that we know you're somewhat excited about it. It's a unique opportunity, and for <coughs> that reason, I'd like to find out where we all stand with this, if we're behind the potential move or not. So having said that, I, I yield back. <coughs> Uh, actually, Ms. Fitzgerald's here. I don't know if she has anything she wants to say on the matter. Or, uh... Uh, yep. <clears throat> so um, thank you, everyone, for inviting us here this, this evening. And uh, thank you to Co Councilor Farwell for coming up with this very interesting idea that, quite honestly, has given me many sleepless nights. <laughs> um, tonight, I'm here not to tell you my opinion, but to be the voice of our seniors. Um, as you all know, we were working on a plan to raise close to a million dollars to add on to the COA. Then suddenly this idea was presented to us. The building committee chose at the time to discuss the proposal and decided to put our fundraising kickoff event on hold. Once the news became public, my staff and I started receiving numerous phone calls and had numerous conversations with seniors who were all in support of the idea. Some may still ask why we need more space, and I've mentioned this before. Our elder population is growing. Our parking is no longer adequate. In fact, I got a call this morning from a senior who's concerned to park at the church for fear of her life to cross over to the Council on Aging because that street is a speedway when folks come around that corner. 
we have to go off-site for large events so that we don't have to turn folks away. We're limited as to who can participate and how many people can participate and what programs and activities we can offer. Our seniors don't ask for anything, but yet they're the folks that built this community. They're policemen, they're firemen, they're doctors, lawyers, and they're factory workers, teachers, and veterans. They pay taxes. They've contributed for many years, some even more than 50 years, to make our city as wonderful as it is today. All they are asking at this time is to have a bigger place that can accommodate more seniors so we don't have to turn people away. A place they can continue to go to for socialization, for lifelong learning opportunities, programs to give them the resources to stay in their homes as they age in place, and also a resource for their family members to go to to get the information to keep their moms and dads home. In my opinion, that's not a lot to ask. The COA is a community agency. We don't care what race, religion, ethnicity, or financial background you are from. We are there for everyone. And quite honestly, we don't even care what age you are. If you come in our doors and you need help, you're going to get it. This morning, the Board of Directors and the Friends of the Council on Aging had their usual monthly meeting and took a vote on tonight's resolve. Both boards voted unanimously to ask you to make a unanimous favorable recommendation on this resolve and to provide us with the resources and support necessary to investigate the possibilities and opportunities to pursue the Shaw Center for a future location of the COA. Without a doubt, we have a lot of concerns and a lot of unanswered questions. In closing, I trust that you will all do the right thing, and I will be more than happy to answer any questions you may have. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Gerald. Councilor Ranieri. Thank you, Mr. Chairman, and good evening, Janice, and thank you for being here again, and uh, thank you for bringing your cheering crowd with you as well. It's always nice to see our seniors attend a city council meeting, and I think this one is uh, adequately one very important to them. And just briefly, as everyone knows, the Shaw Center is in Ward 3, and just standing behind some of the same comments that my colleague, City Council at Large, Winthrop Fowler, has mentioned, I stand behind those same, uh, same sentiments that, that he's voiced. And as you have just mentioned, as I said at the last meeting, the one of the greatest concerns I have is where the center is now and for the public safety of the individuals <clears throat> and the difficulty that, that some have with parking and even crossing the street. Um, coming to Ward 3, I think is, is much of a, uh, a nicer atmosphere of a, of, a, of a situation where when some of our seniors could be leaving an event, look how close they are to Westgate Mall, look how close they are to other shopping centers, look at what they can do just at that end of the city which we have all said, and even Councilor Cruz has also said that, you know, future of Main Street, I hate to say it that way, but the future of Main Street for a lot of businesses is Belmont Street. And that's going to change um, over the next couple of years as that uh, whole street process and lighting is going to change as well. So with that being said, I welcome them to Ward 3. And uh, for me, it's, uh, you know, it's, it's great to have such a great group of people. And we're all seniors. No matter what our nationalities are, whatever, we're all going to be seniors. I'm getting there as well, and I don't know, I'm proud of you're it there. to a point. I am there. <laughs> and you you're just over 60, the, you're there. you can't through the doorway, that's right. And I think it's wonderful. So I hope that, um, you know, we can continue on this road, and, and I support what's before me this evening. So thank you, and thank you all for being here this evening. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you, Councilor. Councilor Beauregard. Thank, thank you, Mr. Chair. First of all, thank you, uh, Janice, for being here this evening. I want to recognize the seniors for being out here. This, uh, Janice mentioned as she was talking about the um, previous experience and educations and uh, contributions that these individuals have made to the community. My biggest concern was 
that you <clears throat> had to say to us this summer you. that you had to turn people away. And I don't believe that you should ever have to turn people away, whether it's school or other services. <laughs> but it particularly frustrated me that after contributing so much to the community for so many years, that individuals that wanted to choose services or attend different events that take place in the community at the Council on Aging could not do so. I am very excited about this proposal, and I look forward to finding out any way that we can help make this process take place. I want to mention that people don't realize that there's the Friends of the Council on Aging, which work already very hard to raise funds for activities and other programs that take place within the Council on Aging, and also that you have your governing body, the board of the Council on Aging. So once again, here are individuals at a different time in their lives volunteering in the community for services that they wish to see uh, take advantage of and see others take advantage of. So this is already <coughs> such a positive program and the idea that you could continue to expand on it and work with the education um, institutions right next door at Broughton High School and I am well aware that you have programs with Stonehill College and to me, I, I look forward to seeing it happen, and the sooner we can make it happen, um, and the better um, you know, we're there. Um, I, sp I don't speak for the whole um, city council, but I speak for myself, saying any way that we can, I can help you make this happen sooner, I'm, I'm on board with doing so. So congratulations, and let it be known that I'm ready to help you. Wow. Thank you. Thank you, Councilor. Councilor Rodriguez. Hello. Hi. <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, you know how I feel about the, the center and the seniors. Uh, uh, not too long ago, we sat here looking at financially supporting the seniors a little bit more than we have done in this city. But I, I listen, I, I support this decision as well because I think we are growing and we need the spaces, but we need to be a little realistic and look at this realistically. Uh, one, as I see it, we're about five years away from being able to do anything at that center anyways. Um, God knows what happens in five years. Uh, chances are most of us won't even be here uh, on this council, I mean. <laughs> I, don't mean, I, don't mean, I, don't mean I don't mean on the planet. I'm talking about on the council. Oh, Good thing you uh, clarified that one. <laughs> I actually plan on not being here in five years, so I don't know. What that sounds better. <laughs> but, um, but when we when we look at the facilities the way it is right now and the condition that it's in, I mean, we had somebody here not too long ago talking to us about the needed repairs that need to be done in order to bring that building up to par. Uh, that concerns me because I also don't want to sell a short, meaning, you know, here's a beautiful facility. It's a, it's got great parking. It's got great this, great great this. But sorry, we can't help you fix it to bring it up to a, a standard that are deserving of people in our community. So that is a concern that I really have, and I and I think it's important for us to get our ducks in a row in the sense to to make sure that we understand where the funding is going to come from, where the funds are going to come from in terms from the outside of the city to, to do the necessary repairs that needs to be done there. Because it's easy for us to sit here and say, we want to do this, 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 and that. But when the time comes for us to come up with some sort of a game plan, how are we going to pay for it to basically leave you out here hanging with no uh, way to go? So I want to make sure that, yes, we support the, uh, the initiative, but we also have to come up with a game plan in order for us to do the things that we need to do to bring it up to to, believe it or not, up to the expect expectations of our community. Councilor, could I respond to those? Yeah, go ahead. We are being realistic. We're being very realistic. We need more space. I can't be any more real than that. It would have taken us four years to raise funds and build an addition anyway. So the time frame is still the same. As far as the condition of the building, we're not even at that point. Tonight you've got a resolve before you that you're voting on to allow us, the Council on Aging and the members, to go investigate, analyze, and do all that work that you're talking about. We're not even at that point. We need the support of you folks and the mayor to allow us that opportunity 
to do the investigative work. We're happy no matter where we go. It would be great if we don't go to the Shaw Center, maybe we get a little bit more support from the city to make us adding on to the center a little bit more easier. I'm looking for a million dollars right now. That's not easy. So either way, we're gonna be happy. And certainly, if and when the time came that we have the opportunity to go in and analyze and take a look at the structure, if it's not what we want, we're not gonna take it. I, I think that's how the resolve is worded. It's allowing us the opportunity <coughs> to get in, do the research with the support of the city council and the mayor, and correct me if I'm reading this wrong, but that's all you're doing tonight is voting to allow us to, to do the research because we don't know anything. Just a point of information, Mr. Chairman. Councilor. Uh, to my friend and colleague, uh, I think there's a distinct chance that the council on aging could move there sooner than five years. Uh, as a matter of fact, I think uh, Mr. English and Mr. Marlin from the, the uh, entertainment management specialists or whatever the corporation is have had a meeting with the mayor. I've bumped into them socially. I think a couple of the rest of us have bumped into them socially. And I, I think that they would be more than willing to cooperate with the city and amend whatever lease agreement there is. So that five year window may be shortened up uh, to a point where hopefully if this resolve is favorably passed, there can be some financial analysis done and some needs assessment done as to what the financial package might be. So I don't know if that However, helps. There is, a, there is a contract right now till, 20, till 2021. Exactly. Councilor, you have the floor. Um, Right, because another, another concern that I actually have, and I, again, I, I want to make sure that we're clear about this. I'm not against the idea of the senior center moving to the Shaw Center <clears throat> for the reasons that you've stated. I'm just being realistic about it to say, I also don't want us to embark on something that, you know, we get into a facility that has uh, a humonger, <coughs> humongous uh, maintenance expense, that we're not gonna be able to do it because the city, you know, two, three years down the road isn't able to pitch in and do the things that it needs to do. I don't want our folks to come back and say, look, we had a nice facility down there that you guys rented out to X, Y, and Z. Now we're at this, uh, at this facility and we can't afford to maintain it or we can't afford to, uh, to run it the way we should be running it. And that's the concern that I have. So. It has to be answered in the sense so that some of us feel comfortable enough to say, "Yeah, I'm going to sell. I'm going to sell this project to our seniors, but I'm not going to sell them short." You know, because it sounds nice on the outside, but I want to make sure that we're a little realistic in terms. We understand that spaces are needed. We understand that the community is growing, but we want to make sure that it's not something that's done for a year or two and then oop, up it goes. You know, because in this city we tend to do that. We tend to do that with some fun stuff that comes out. And before you know it, it has absolutely no support and it dies off. So I want to make sure that if it's something that we embark in, we're not doing this just for a lot of fanfare, but we're doing this because we are able to support it and put our efforts behind it so that it's successful and that it's a place that our seniors can call home for long after we are gone, all gone. And I mean gone, gone. <laughs> and, and I hear what you're saying, and we're all on the same page as you. We are looking to get us into a situation that is gonna be um, a problem, an issue, a failure. So we're all on the same page. Thank you. And also, um, um, just one more question, mm -hmm. Mr. Chairman. Um, you know, in this city, we don't have many function facilities. Uh, it's actually embarrassing to a point where Weddings uh, for Brocktonians happen in places not necessarily in Brockton because we technically have one city um, sponsored facility or basically not much in terms of a large facility to handle some events. So the idea would, would, it, would be to somehow keep that functioning as a function facility, let's say on a weekend, or basically to cut that out altogether. Have you thought about that? So once again, we're not even at that point. I said thought. So I'll answer that. So a thought from the seniors in the building committee is this, this idea has opened up a lot of opportunities for us that we didn't even think of <clears throat> months ago, a year ago. Budget and funding 
is always a problem in staffing. I still have a staffing problem. Given the opportunity to move to a location like the Shaw Center does open up the doors for us to be able to do some sort of events rentals to perhaps draw some additional funds. That's a thought. It hasn't been discussed. It's not the answer. It's not what, you know, at this point we're planning to do. It's just something that's kind of been thrown around by the building committee. Because one of the, one of the other concerns that I have is that I've, I've actually voiced this concern several times that the two facilities that we have on the west side of the city, the stadium and, and the, the center, they frankly should be divorced. The two should not be together because I honestly, I cannot comprehend the fact that we have a facility <laughs> with the population that we have in this city that does not make money on its own. I think it's poor management. It's the way the, the marriage is done in the sense that's not working out too well. But at the same time, only because I see these events that take place on a regular basis, just came this Saturday from Taunton because there was an event in Taunton from Brocktonians that we had to go to because there's no open facilities in the city to do it. So I'd hate to lose that ability, <coughs> but at the same time, I support what you're, what, what you're trying to do here. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Council. Council Monahan. Uh, yes, good evening, James. Oh, Mr. Bath, did you want to say something? Can I, can I just address this? If this sure. Uh, Councilor Rodriguez, we, we, we're on the same page with this because when we were here the last time, those the very concerns that you were talking about, except for the marriage between the stadium and the, and the center, we expressed those concerns too. If you remember Councilor Farwell, when you first said that, I said it, it was an interesting proposition, but there was a lot of things that we needed to discuss. And the biggest thing was money and who was gonna fix it and what, would, what the infrastructure looked like, and we needed to do the walkabout in there. So we, we really need to, so I think we're on the same page. So, uh, and the other thing is, is that even if we go ahead, even if this doesn't work and we go ahead and we put the extension onto the council, on the existing council on aging, I think we're gonna have to revisit that space again for a further expansion. Because by the year 2020, which is not that far away, it's three years, the senior population in this city is going to swell to over 20,000. And that Council on Aging, where we have right now, and the expansion of that may not be sufficient enough. We may, we may have to come back with the same, or face the same problems that we are now, and I'm sure we don't want to do that. If this does happen and we do go to the Shaw Center, the expansion there is manageable. We don't want to reduce anything in terms of events. I agree with you, uh, Councillor. Uh, we do need space here to, <coughs> to provide events. So I, I always thought it was a shame that we had to go off-site, and when I mean off-site, out of Brockton to do something that was reasonable. You know, we have to go to Randolph to do a function. I mean, you know. We're not, we shouldn't be supporting the city of Randolph. You know, help me about with that. So, but I think we, we are on the same page with that and we are thinking about that. But as far as the marriage between the stadium and, and the Shaw Center, that's up to you guys, however you want to handle all of that. We're here focusing just on what are we going to be able to do for the seniors going forward because the population is just going to grow. Those of us who are baby boomers, there's 72 million of us and I've said this before, and we're now senior citizens. So that's, so the population is gonna swell. Thank you. Thank you. Council Monaghan? Yes, good evening, Jan. <coughs> good evening. I don't know if you move over there, but we, you know, the council courts have not played it at that big of a venue, so I don't know if it'd be as good. <laughs> but we'll be stuck doing it again. We've <laughs> to go up on our, our price. We've emptied out bigger rooms than that. That's true. <laughs> <laughs> they pay us more to leave, anyway. Uh, and I agree with Council Rodriguez, there is a lot of concerns with that building. It hasn't been maintained properly. There's a lot of things. But again, we're, you're voting tonight just to allow you to an analyze what's going on. Obviously, like, if, if, we, if you do get it, you can, uh, will there be rentals? Will there be things we can do? So there's a lot of stuff that have to happen before any of the concerns, uh, all the concerns have to be met. But we're just letting you analyze that. And I think everybody's in favor of that. Um, I would say that I would continue to do the fundraising now, because you could possibly still be having to 
add on to the uh, original center that we have now. So, I mean, I'd, I'd push for the fundraising now because one way or another, <coughs> you're going to need it, and it's going to lead a lot of money. I'd hate to see you leaving Ward 2, but if we can go into Ward 3, uh, you know, anyway. Um, <laughs> but, no, I, it's, I just think continue the fundraising. I get that going as soon as possible. I think everybody here really is, is on board with just having you look into uh, the possibilities of, of the Shiraz Center, what you need to do, and then we can move forward with any other, uh, addressing any other issues that go along with it. But I think we're all in favor. Thank you, Mr. Uh, Chair. In regards to the fundraising, the committee had decided that where this idea had kind of come at us so quickly, <clears throat> that it would have been um, awkward, difficult to ask folks to give us money and then say, but we don't know where you're using it mm -hmm. because we don't know where the money would be used. So that's why the committee chose to kind of postpone it. <coughs> we're not saying we're not going to do it. If we have to, we will. But it just kind of put us in an uncomfortable situation to ask someone for $25,000 or more and then say, I don't know where I'm going to use the money. So You've never had any problem asking me for money. <laughs> We're still waiting for the check, quite honestly, Councillor. So it bounced. <laughs> anyway, thank you. Thank you. Councillor Lally. I, um, I just want to sort of build off the uh, you know, point, this are points that had been, had been made. Councillor Rodriguez uh, you know, raised a good concern about the expenses involved in the building. <clears throat> But I, I believe it was I believe it was also brought up that you know you can fundraise for that just as easy as you can fundraise to add on to an existing building you have. Mm -hmm. uh, personally, when I look down the line and see you know where where where's the Brockton Council on Aging when I'm a senior? Where's it going to be? I I don't <laughs> think that there will be enough space at the the current center, but I could reasonably see the the council on aging still being at the Shaw's center still being able to hold the amount of traffic that it needs to hold Councilor, you're from a techie generation so <laughs> when that's that's a, that's a generalization i still yell at my computer <laughs> when you become a senior who knows where you folks are going to be you're going to be out in space somewhere but you got a ways to go thank you you all set, Councillor? You all set? Councillor Sullivan. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Good evening. Good evening. Um, I think this is a really good first step, and that's what it is. It's a first step to take care of the seniors, and we're authorizing you to do your due diligence, do your homework, do your analysis, you know, look at the structure, do anything and everything to decide if it's the right location. I myself think it is the right location, yeah. um, but I think one step that you did today to take a corporate vote, a board vote, was brilliant. It's a great idea. My only suggestion, my humble opinion, would be to put it in a formal written letter, send it to the city clerk so we'll have some correspondence. I'd also suggest maybe you send it to the mayor's office as well. Um, because once you do your homework and your due diligence, the board will take a subsequent, another vote at some point. Um, I, do, I do think that the Ward 2 Council might be onto something in terms of, and again, all 11 of us are politicians and we always fundraise. I think from a, from a fundraising standpoint, if I'm gonna donate 25 grand to the Council on Aging, I'm gonna donate 25 grand to the Council on What's Aging. What's that? Did you just say he's gonna donate 25 from, grand? From Tim Cruz's <laughs> bank account. <laughs> but I, but I think, <laughs> but I do think, uh, don't tell my wife, but I do think, um, I do think that you could continue to do your efforts of fundraising based upon future expansion. And it may or may not be at your present location. It may be at the Shaw Center. It may be at another location. We don't know. But I, I do think you're missing an opportunity to fundraise, especially during the holiday season. People are in a, a charitable giving time. And if, if it doesn't come to fruition and you do your homework and the Shaw Center is not the right location and you're going to expand the Mary Cruz Kennedy um, location, well, you'll have some money in the bank. And if not, and you're going to go to the Shaw Center, maybe you use that to, to beautify the grounds. But I, I, I do think that that might be something the board should consider instead of putting it on hiatus. Um, but I do want to thank uh, Mr. Farwell. I, I, I also think Mr. Rodriguez has brought up some points as well. I mean, we know that um, 
there's a lot of money that has not been spent on that property. Um, and it's a shame. It should be. I mean, you upkeep your house, you should be upkeeping another asset owned by the city of Brockton. So mm -hmm. I just, I'm going to say that I wholeheartedly support you. I always support the seniors. Um, we're all going to be there sooner than later. And uh, thank you for being here, Janice. And thank you and Michelle for what you do. And, and happy holidays to everyone here tonight. Thank you. Thank you, Councilor. Thank you, Councilor. Councilor Azak. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Good evening, Ms. Fitzgerald. Good evening. Um, there's no question that you need a, a larger space, and I'm in support of that. But once again, I'm going to echo my colleagues. I'm very familiar with the Shaw Center, and I just um, all I'm asking is that you keep the city council in the conversation. We keep this going. You start your. We we don't want to see the council on aging, which we care about a lot, in a situation where the they're at right now, the Shaw Center and the Rock Center. So that's just keep us part of the conversation, keep this going so we can make good decisions along the way. Thank you. I agree. And, you know, we're, we're very transparent. And honestly, we need your help. So that's our um, hopes. Our goal is to be able to all work together to make this happen. We're a city department. We provide for all the seniors in the community. So certainly we'd be foolish if we thought, you know, this is just our, our thing and keep it from you. But... You know, we need as much help as we can get from all of you. So thank you very much. Thank you. Yes. Councilor Fowell. Yeah, just final comments to my colleagues. Thank you very much for the questions that have been asked and to Ms. Fitzgerald and everyone who's here. Um, just a couple of last minute points. The, the bond that was uh, floated to pay for that complex will be paid up, I believe, next April or May of 2017. Mm -hmm. And frankly, if we had to go out and borrow another million or a million and a half to bring that up to what it should be based on the report that B21 gave us, I think that's a small investment in the senior population of, of which I'm a member. And uh, I do agree with Councilor Rodriguez. I'd like to see it stay open as a function facility with the revenue shared between maybe a vendor you select and, and the Council on Aging. But, but finally, uh, there is an election year next year, and one of the reasons why I wanted to take a vote and then have it favorably voted on in the next council meeting is things in Brockton tend to become political footballs. I know that's hard to believe, but I've seen it. And I, I would just like to have this group on record as saying, if that's what you want to do, we'll help you in any way we can. And that's really what this resolve is about. If that's where you want to go, then I, I think all of us can lend our support, do what we can, and if we pass this resolve, maybe that will help you fundraise even more because mm -hmm. you'll have the minutes of the, of the city council meeting uh, showing that uh, that's the vote that was taken. So thank you very much to my colleague. And yeah. Councilor, I just want to say again, thank you so much for coming up with this idea and your support on this. It's, it's really kind of put us in another direction. But if I could ask something of you, could you give me a couple weeks, a month or so to get caught up on my sleep before you come up with any other d ideas? <laughs> <coughs> getting a little bit cranky. In, in the spirit of the holiday season, I think we can do that. So. <laughs> Councilor Stanisky, did oh, you I don't ask the same much normally, Mr. Chairman, but I'd like to say that when I become a senior citizen, I will be joining <laughs> you. And I'd like to move this with a favorable recommendation. Second. 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 Council. Second. <laughs> Motion made and seconded to recommend favorably to the full city council. And before we vote, just one request. Wherever we do move, I hope the name stays the same. Yes. You know, that's, if I can just say, that was number one at everyone's, top of everyone's list. That nice. isn't even a question. We're the Mary Cruz Kennedy Senior Center, not only f because of Mary Cruz, but Tom as well. I appreciate so, that. So, thank you. Motion made and seconded to recommend favorably to full city council. All those in favor? All those opposed? Recommended favorably to the full city council. Good luck and happy holidays. We'll take the uh, two minute recess.
We're back in session, item number four. Resolved, the Public Safety Committee of the City Council shall meet and review the provisions of the new law, review current zoning, business regulations, and public safety issues with appropriate department heads, hold a public hearing at the discretion of the committee, and report back to the full council no later than the first regular meeting in March 2017 with recommendations or proposed ordinance changes to protect the interest of our residents. Invited John Crowley, Police Chief, Louis Detalia, Board of Health Director. Uh, council, just so you know where it says uh, provisions of the new law, it was just left out. Uh, it, it's in the full, uh, the full resolve. This has to do with the uh, new marijuana, question for marijuana law, no. just so there's no, uh, no questions. Uh, I see Mr. Tataglia here. Uh, Councilor Farwell, this is yours, I believe? Th this is mine, yes. And, and did you want to discuss this tonight, or do you want to just make a motion to send it to public safety? I, I really think uh, we could just send it to public safety, or make it a favorable recommendation, and then uh, the council would have to send it to public safety, correct? The motion would be to send it to public safety. Okay. I, uh, actually, I'm sorry, you're correct. We'd have to re finance. recommend favorably council. back to the council and send it to yes. public safety. Uh, unless Mr. Tataglia has something that he wants to say tonight, I would uh, move favorable to the full city council with the intention of having it go to public safety. Second. Motion made and seconded to send to uh, this back to the city council with a favorable recommendation with the uh, idea that it will then be sent to uh, Public safety. All those in favor? All those opposed? Recommended favorably to the full city council. Uh, thank you, Chief, and uh, thank you, Mr. Stagley, for being here. Okay. Item number five. <laughs> Resolve that the Brockton Water Systems Manager, a representative of the Brockton Water Commission, a representative of the Central Plymouth County Water District Commission, Mr. Alex Mansfield and Ms. Pine Dua of the Jones River Watershed Association, be invited to a meeting of the City Council to discuss issues affecting the quality and quantity of the City's water resources. The address of Jones River, Jones River Watershed Association is 55 Landing Road, Kingston, Mass. Oh, invited fine. Lawrence Riley. Uh, you can dispense with the reading, yeah. thank you. Uh, Councilors, I did receive notification today from the Law Department that due to ongoing negotiations, well, we, he would prefer and he has instructed City employees not to speak on this tonight. I'd entertain a motion. Motion postponed. Second. Second. Uh, motion to postpone yeah, we quickly did February. Huh? Uh, I would say uh, second FENCOM in February. To get motion a status update at that time. Motion is made and se seconded to recommend to, the, uh, excuse me, to postpone to the second F FINCOM in February. All those in favor? All those opposed? Recommended, uh, excuse me, postpone till the second in uh, February. Second FINCOM. Item number six. Resolve that the City Auditor be here before a committee of the City Council to review the required <coughs> auditing procedures and that the City Auditor is authorized and directed to implement policies and procedures to account for proper recording of data, processing of payments, and expenditure of funds. Further, that all departments, boards, and commissions are to adhere to the policies and procedures. Invited Mary Lynn Peters to City Auditor. Ooh. Good evening, Ms. Peters. Good evening. Uh, Councillor... Farwell, this, yours? this was actually filed on behalf of the accounts committee. So unless uh, Chairman Ian Erie has something to offer, uh, we Mr. can Eary. let the auditor. Let my mind go to work now. <laughs> <laughs> now? Now. <laughs> yeah, because we did we did discuss it, I think, at, uh, at length, if I'm not mistaken, into in um, asking you to come up with some other, uh, and other <coughs> ways of... Um, showing the, the data and processing payments and expenditure of funds. And I don't know if you've done any, have you, have you been able to do any type of research to what you think would be in, in more of a comprehensive way, comprehensive way than what we were seeing when, we, when we've attended the meetings, when we go through the warrants and everything. A lot of questions get asked to, you know, to how and what and why and, and that, that type of thing. So I don't know if you've done anything there, um, been able to, let's put it that way. In terms of, Coming up with a format, I haven't done that yet. Um, I wanted to first start on the best practices, which you all have a copy, That's right. um, and that was my main concern. Um, and then going forward, I did want to create a uniform way for every single department to submit their purchase orders um, with the same sort of criteria for everyone across the board. That way it would be easier in terms of being able to review something and see what was submitted. So pretty much what we received today is somewhat the beginning of. That's right. In regards to what we've been talking uh, about. And I, um, just receiving it today, I mean, I only had a chance to take a look at it just, just briefly. And um, seeing 
it expels out just what some of the practices need to be uh, with every department. And that starts right, as we know, right from the mayor's office, right down. I mean, every department in adhering to um, everything that is, is, bef is before them as well and making sure that they all, you know, they all understand it. I think what's here, and like I said, I just started reading through it. Didn't have a chance to really, you know, study much of it, but, but we'll look at it and, and um, you know, comprehend what is, what is all here. But I think, I think it's been something that's been probably overlooked over the last few years, to be truthful with you, mm -hmm. because some <coughs> departments feel that they can just in any such way do what they want to do, but can't really. And um, this here is a clearer understanding of just how you're spending funds, whether it be for uh, charitable situations, whether it be for work sessions, staff meetings, um, whether you're going to have a training session and, you know, are you able to and can you feed the employees, can you, cannot. I know there are some things that are contractual at the same time, Correct. so you, you have to look at that as well. I just want to make sure that every department, and that, as far as I'm concerned, goes for 43 Crescent Street as well. Mm -hmm. That's definitely correct. As you know, I was there for a few years. I do. So I know some of the ins and outs and the roadways. Um, he was. You know, and, <laughs> and uh, I just want to make sure that every department has a clear understanding uh, of it. Um, I, I think it's going to be very feasible. And uh, from what I've uh, even heard, and um, I, th I, I know this evening the, uh, um, the newspaper just contacted me in regards to doing, doing a story on it. And I know, um, I, I think, and I'm not afraid to say it, but... Publicly, I think some of the situations we've raised, I think even the mayor is, is looking to being repaying back at the same time, which I think is a plus. Um, and I think that that uh, just goes to show that what the accounts committee is doing is, is what we're supposed to be doing, and we're on track on that. So appreciate what you're doing here. I am going to digest it more so, but I'll open up any other members or any other members of the accounts committee that want to, you know, fill in uh, questions uh, uh, that they may have for you as well. Thank you. Thank you. But thank you. Thank you, Councilor. Councilor Rezac. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I would just like to thank um, Mel for preparing this for us because I, I'm not sure what my colleagues that have been here for many, many years, <laughs> more than three um, dealt with on the accounts committee, but I'm, I'm sure a lot of these questions um, didn't come up and a lot of stuff got passed by. So I'm glad that you have us on the right route and that, um, you know, if we have questions, we have answers. So thank you. You're welcome. Thank you, Councilor. Councilor Beauregard. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Uh, Mel, mostly I wanted to, first of all, thanks for being here tonight. And I just want to make it clear to some of our, you know, the colleagues here that don't serve on the accounts committee a couple of things arose that we would ask a question and <coughs> there weren't enough character spaces to even identify what the expenditure was it would be like half a word it wouldn't even be an abbreviation so i know that was one of the, the situations that was discussed another thing that had been brought up by um uh, Council Farwell was the fact that he had been approached by an individual that part, works for a vendor that is part of the city and they were having trouble finding out when the payment was taking place or how to keep track of it. So the idea is that I know a lot of people are perceiving some of this as being a witch hunt when in fact the idea is it's not and it never started out to be like that. It was to better process and be able to respond to any questions that, that existed because you are a very busy department and this is a city of over 100,000 people and there's a lot of it. Uh, transactions that take place, some of them regularly, others that are exceptions, and the idea was to find the best way to process all this, to see, to be able to review and retrieve information and work within the other departments and have a policy that worked for everyone the best way possible under the circumstances. So I, I, I just, I want people to understand that that is part of the goal of both working with the audit department and the accounts committee and um, where we hope that in the future it'll be easier for vendors, easier for other departments and individuals working in those departments to follow through with all these processes. So thank you. Thank you, Councillor. Mr. Chairman, I'm going to move favorable recommend. Uh, oh, I'm sorry. If you have a motion, there are some others who want to speak. I just, uh, before you make apologies. a motion, uh, before I get back to Councillor Azak, anybody else? <coughs> Councilor Azak. Quick question on the, um, not um, my Councilor Beauregard 
asked about that space. I did speak to the IT department, so I hope that was resolved. Um, they are working with me. Um, I probably want more, so that's okay. one of the things that we're just adding on to, so we can come up with a final you know, um, approach to how everything is gonna be uniform going across the board. Very good, and the other, just to um, comment, to clear up something with my colleague that, um, Council Beauregard just mentioned that a lot of stuff that was in the paper came before us. I have to clarify that most of the stuff did not come before us in the committee that's been printed in the paper. So I'd like that clarified. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. Council Farwell. I'm going to move favorable recommendation Second. with the understanding that this will eventually go back to the accounts committee. We mm -hmm. can work with you and then bring a full report back to the council. Second. M Mr. Chairman, on the, on the motion. On the motion, Councillor uh, Rodriguez. <coughs> Hi, Mel. Hi. Uh, just a quick question. I mean, these, rec these best practice re recommendations that you've made, uh, are these that you were, and, if, and, I, and I apologize if you had, had already mentioned this, but did you get these from other municipalities or? No, actually, or? these are um, part of research from what the DOR um, guidelines or recommendations are. So it's part of researching laws and understanding that the DOR is here to help oversee things and they set clear guidelines and help answer questions when need be. Because the question that I have is what brought this whole hoopla to what we are today, which was the mayor taking the class at Massasoit. And if you look at your first recommendation basically it says attend a class mm -hmm. that is correct so were we wrong to look into the fact that he was taking a class well when it basically says on this that, that it somebody is allowed. can take a class it is allowed and that was something that was brought up um, everyone has different opinion and that's where things get um, difficult to answer because I'm following laws and making decisions based on that, whereas others are making their own opinion based on however judgment they want to do. Um, so in terms of what is recommended and what is allowed, I put these in the memo, um, and everyone can have a different opinion, but because of the state statute, it allows me to make decisions based on what's legal and what's not, and it is actually legal to Per, you know, um, attend a class using public funds, and um, I hope that answers your question. So as long as it's approved by the a city. supervisor or, and in, yes. in the case of the mayor, the auditor? Yes, that is true. Okay. All right, well, thank you, Mel. Thank You're you, welcome. Mr. Chairman. Thank you. Motion made and seconded. On, on, on the motion, I need to, follow, if I could, Mr. Yeah. Chair, I want to just follow up on Council Rodriguez. Um, Mel, good evening. So if, if the CEO of the city of Brockton, the mayor, who is the ultimate department head, chooses to take a training course to enhance his official capacity as mayor, he can do that upon his own approval of his own class? I mean, that makes no sense. Well, he first submits it. That's what all department heads do. There's a process that we go through where every department has a department head and they sign off. So he's the department head of his department. And then um, the back, the backup information, and whatnot, the registration and the having taken the class, all of that, those backup documents are attached and then submitted to the city auditor, and that's where it is approved. And again, based on you know the law and guidelines, the city auditor, whether it's me or my predecessor, it we review things based on the information given, and then we make a decision based on that. We don't do things based on what is ethically or morally correct. That's for the Ethics Commission to take place. This is purely based on what the statute allows and what the DOR recommends, and then a city auditor is to make that determination. But I believe there's a distinction under the DOR where there's a difference between an appointed official, such as a town manager that's mm -hmm. under contract to a municipality, and an elected official, such as a mayor under our charter form of government. I believe that the DOR does have distinctions. So relative to this best practice, has the DOR vetted this out? Had they seen this memo? My memo? Yeah. No, they have not seen my memo. Because I don't, I, 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 I think that there is a distinction, and I don't know if the DOR um, should opine on that and give you, vis-a-vis -vis, through your office, um, the difference between what I just stated. 
I understand what you're saying, but the DOR, my recommendations are based on DOR guidelines. So any information that you see there is, is approved by the DOR. I don't know if you, I, I don't feel that I need to submit my best practices to the DOR because it's based on their recommendations. So I'm taking information from them to create best practices for the city. So um, I, respectfully, I, I understand what you're saying, but I don't particularly agree with it yeah. because um, I'm using information and guidelines and the law to help me make my decision. And I so, appreciate that. Mm -hmm. What I'm just saying is um, having practiced law for municipalities, I believe that there is a distinction under the DOR relative to an appointed elected CEO of a municipality and in an elected one. I believe that there is a difference. I'm sure there is, yeah. but there yeah. isn't um, an issue in terms of how it's interpreted. Well, there, there would be, there would be, because say a town manager, say in the town of Bridgewater or Randolph, is the CEO and in charge of that town, but the approval would be from the appointing authority, such as the town council or the board of selectmen. Mm -hmm. Whereas here in the city of Brockton or Boston, the mayor is the ultimate authority, and there is no approval, so that's the distinction. Yes and no. The mayor can make his um, request, but I'm following guidelines yeah. that are given to me above him with the DOR. And so even if he is the department head and he oversees everything, it ultimately comes down to how the law sees things and how basically if I don't, if I sign off on something, it's my credibility and it's my issue, so that's why this was important to going forward for me to make a stand and explain yeah. why I'm having certain guidelines put out there and how we need to follow these. Okay, thank you. You're welcome. Uh, Just, Councilor Fowell. Yeah, I, I didn't expect this we to We do come have up. a motion on the floor, which we're moving on. You may have your motion. Uh, we're gonna speak on this. Uh, I prefer that you withdraw your motion. All right, I'll withdraw my motion temporarily. Second. Motion made. Motion has been withdrawn because we're not discussing the motion here. Here's what I would say, picking up on Councilor Sullivan. I, I would agree with you that the DOR has a certain set of guidelines for municipal expenditures, but there are other guidelines, and they're called ordinances. And we occupy ordinance positions. The school committee occupies ordinance positions. The mayor occupies an ordinance position. And if the ordinances don't provide for a specific benefit, you can't have a mayor just come in and arbitrarily deci decide, well, you know, I think I'm going to go to Harvard Extension School, and I'm going to get a degree, and I'm going to pay for it. And, and I understand and what you're saying. Um, it, it, my I concern got, is that I, have one, I think... I have one other more piece of information for you, and then I'll put okay. the package together. Mm -hmm. The mayor's salary is set, I believe, by Chapter 635 of the Acts of 2000. And that has the salary, and it has the factor that will be used to increase his salary or her Every salary year. periodically. And it goes on to say, and the mayor may have use of a city-owned vehicle if the ordinances provide. And I think that state law strengthens the fact that if you don't have a benefit coming to you by ordinance, you just can't arbitrarily decide, well, I need this benefit. Well, I need this class. Because think of all the classes a mayor could take. And, and pass on the expenses to the to the uh, the taxpayer. So, without saying any more tonight, I think this needs a lot more study. I appreciate the best practices, but I think if you look at the law that's in effect with regard to the mayor's salary and the ordinances of the city of Brockton, for ordinance positions, there is no tuition reimbursement. Not for us. Not for anyone else. Okay, but the problem is that what you're doing is you're basing your explanation on ordinance, but there's no ordinance that states that he cannot take a class. There's nothing. If you can tell me one, then I will respectfully, you know, well, wither. I but the point of the matter is that even with ordinances, the law, state law trumps ordinance. So if, if there's where, this is where this gray wiggle room. I understand where you're coming from, and I, I do, and everybody's right to their opinion, but the fact of the matter is that we have laws for a reason. And unless there is a law that states that he's not allowed to do that, that this is illegal, or that this is unethical, then you can say that respectfully what he did was wrong. But me personally, as a city auditor, and given the state statutes to allow me to make these decisions, 
even though I was not the one who did that, I still agree with that. I think that the class was within his boundaries and we, he was allowed to use public funds to take the class. Okay, I, and I certainly respect your opinion even though I think the ethics laws and some other statutes contradict that. So we'll just have to see where it goes. That's true too. But you are more than welcome to provide me with the state statutes that say that he is incorrect. Thank, Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you. Uh, anyone else before we're done? No, I'll entertain that motion. Uh, move to move favorable recommendation with the understanding it'll eventually go to accounts. Second. Uh, so you want to move it favorably back to the council? Yes. And then at council, we'll send it to the accounts committee to get together with. Motion made and seconded to recommend favorably to full city council. All those in favor? All those opposed? Recommended favorably. Thank you very much, Ms. Chu. Uh, any, uh, anybody? Council Beauregard. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Well, first of all, we want to commend uh, another successful year of the Jingle Bell Run. Some of us were able to attend. Yes, yeah, I And uh, also want to mention this came out the other day, winter parking ban. And of course, we saw a little bit of a dusting. And um, want to let people know that, yes, starting um, December 1st till April 1st, there is uh, the winter parking ban, and it's on the city's website, and the information is available in other locations. And also, I want to mention that the <coughs> Attorney General's office is going to be holding um, office hours at um, Community Connections of Brockton, 1367 Main Street. This is an opportunity from 6 to 8 p.m. Thursday, December 8th, that if people have um, some questions um, from you know, minimum wage to overtime or disputing um, purchases and faulty products or problems with landlords, et cetera, that um, representatives from the Attorney General's office are available to assist individuals. And I think uh, that they're available, they have information handouts, and they're, um, this is advantageous for individuals seeking, you know, with um, challenges of this nature. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Councilors, just a reminder, next Monday evening, 7 o'clock, special uh, meeting to uh, set the tax rate. Uh, it will be a public hearing first, which is not a public discussion. It's not question and answer, but the public will have a chance to uh, uh, opine before, the, before we will meet and we will set the tax rate next Monday night. Uh, other than that, Mr. Chairman, Council will you Sullivan. be, like in past years, will be, be a limit on how long people can speak? Yes. Okay. Yes. I'll announce that at the time. Yep. It will depend on how many people sign up to okay. speak. Thank you. Thank you. We're adjourned. Robert.